Hey there, Wargamers, Justin Aaron Painter here today. Whoosh, we're going to check out some Battletech. I'd like to welcome you guys back to the channel. If you're returning here, uh, thank you for tuning in. If you are new, also welcome. And in both cases, make sure you guys smash Alpha Strike, that like button, subscribe button. Let's, uh, let's smash that like you're trying to destroy the enemy mech, but instead we're going to channel energy into helping the channel grow. I apologize ahead of time because I got a little bit of a cold, but we're fresh back from Depticon, and I want to do an unboxing video of the Snords Irregulars Assault Lance for you guys today. So I've got my handy dandy whooshing, lightsaber exacto blades. So let's go ahead and crack this bad boy open and get the cards, sort out the mechs, and show you guys what I picked up at AdeptCon. Now, this box was not exclusive to the con. It is important to note that the Snords Irregulars Assault Lance will be available for general retail at some point. Um, I think it's going to be a couple months, but they had them early at the con for those who are there. So I got something a little bit early, but uh, don't fret. If you did not get one, they will be available at some point in the near future. That said, first thing I always like to do is to showcase the back art. And if you watched the Urban Mech video, you know that the back panel wasn't super amazing, but this this one looks really nice. What are those? House Merrick? We got, uh, I think that's a Jenner. And then, uh, don't tell me a Highlander? I'm pretty sure it's a Highlander. Yeah. That looks great. The purple is really nice. Nice splash. I dig the color there. Uh, as always, I wish that was an insert you could pull out. You could cut the box and keep it, but it would be cool if it was an insert because uh, they really do have, they really do have nice packaging. That said, let's go ahead and get our mechs out here. I'll lay them out. And, yeah. We'll check them out. Now, there's some other little Greeblies here. Um, we got an alt nuts head for like basing. Um, we've got the jump jets. I figure out which mech that goes for, goes to. Um, oh, okay, so it's going to this guy. Okay. So does he pop off? Sure does. Very cool. So this is one of the first ones that, not, not that it came with jump stuff, because there are other ones that came with jump stuff, but it's one of the first ones that had even extra bits. This one has, um, Looks like a rifleman um, sensor. I think a Phoenix Hawk head, maybe, and some like cinematic effects, which is different. Um, I know we've had the little urban mech part before, but those are those are different. So, anyways, that said, let's go ahead and grab our cards here, and we'll sort these out. I'll show you the pilot cards, then we'll grab the um, unit card, and um, we will check out the minis. So we've got the guillotine. Boop. We've got the Highlander. Shubu. We've got the hybrid Frankenmech Rifleman. And we've got the Spartan. So the Spartan will do first. All right. So first up on deck, we've got that Spartan. This one's Edmund Rides coming in at a 3 4. This is the 83rd Division White Cyclones. Shubu. As always, I pause for a moment so you guys can pause this to read the read it if you care about the card. Coming in at a 2-3 Alexandria Natasha Snord. Snord's Irregulars. Shoop. All right, so for the first unit card here, we've got the SPTN3 coming in at 46 points. Usable in the Civil War era all the way up through the Ill Clan, the current era. TMM2, movement 10, uh, I don't know if I said the points, if I didn't, we'll say enough, I did, you're going to repeat, 46, TMM2, 10 move, the move's nice, 441, that's not bad, um, it's got 7 armor, 4 structure, C3I, mech HQ2, and tag, so with these, the big deal with these special abilities, which you're paying for, part of the points, tag, um, you know, hopefully you've got a way or a reason to have it to use it with your force. Mech HQ is optional rules, so if you're playing and they aren't using it, those points are wasted. C3I, you really need to build a force that takes advantage of this. And if you don't, again, wasted points. Um, I like the TMM2. I like the amount of HP. I like the 4-4 damage. That's pretty good. But let's see what we've got for the other option here. And obviously, if you're a veteran, you can check out Master Unit List and look at other options for uh, your mechs. But in this case, we're looking at the card. This one, we've got the SPTN2 coming in at 43 points. TMM2, move 10, usable in all areas, which is nice. 4 for 1 for damage, so same amount of damage. 7 armor, 4 structure, AMS, and tag, so same as the other guys. So this guy's coming in at 3 points less, and you're losing some of the special abilities. This one's going to be the real winner, in my opinion, between the two, because you're paying for less stuff that you um, you might may or may not use. You might may or may not use the tag. AMS is almost always useful. Whereas C3I, you have to build a list to take advantage. Mech HQ is optional, and you might not be using the tag. So save three points. Use this variant if you're only using the cards. Let's grab the guillotine model here. i got to make sure because I don't recognize it by look. So here we go. Check out this bad boy. All 
right. It's kind of kind of weird looking, uh, which is from the Snords regular box. So you know maybe it's supposed to be weird looking. And I apologize. I think I said this at the beginning of the video. My voice is coming back from Adepticon, and I got a little bit of a cold, so I'm a little a little crackly. Crackly. My voice is a little uh, out there, and I sound a little stuffed up. So as we're checking out units, if you notice me sounding goofy, that is why. Um, again, as I've been saying in videos, I'm not noticing the mold lines nearly as prominently as the other ones. I think they are getting their molds designed where the mold lines are hidden better or they're put in, put in spots that are more easily to clean most of the time. Not always, but most of the time. I feel like it's gotten better. Um, yeah, visually speaking, this isn't my favorite mech. It kind of looks like a, a weird crabby looking head thing. I don't know how to describe it. Um, but yeah, this might be your jam. Or if you just want to add some variety to your forces, there you go. You got a new plastic mech coming at you. Next up, we're going to check out the Cy or not Cyclops, the, <laughs> the Highlander here. So we've got uh, Effet Metgravian for five mercenary. I'm assuming all of these are going to be mercenaries. Shoop. Rhonda Snord, a one two. Interesting. I guess this is like the Snord regular. And let's go ahead and check out the cards here. You've got the Highlander HGN694 coming at 48 points, usable in the Civil War era through the Ill Clan. TMM1, 6 move, 563 for damage. It's got uh, 15, nope, excuse me, 14 life and case. Straightforward, not a lot of special abilities. TMM uh, is not necessarily low for a Highlander, but like, you know, you'd like to not die. Um, but it's got a lot of life, um, reasonably tanky, and the 6 damage at medium range is very, very nice. Let's see what we've got for the alternate variant. Coming in at one point less, we've got the Highlander HGN732, 47 points, usable in all eras, which is nice. Team M1, 6 jump, um, 343 for damage, so the damage is a little less, but the 4 at the medium range, which is going to be your most common range that you use, is good. The jump is good because it's going to be used, in, you can use that in conjunction with your TMM to boost that to a 2, and with a mech of this much HP, that's great. Uh, let's see if I can do a quick math. I think it's 14, 16 life, 16 life, case and indirect fire 1 versus the 14 life over here so you're getting two more structure it looks like not bad and overheat i don't know if i missed that in some of the other cards i've looked at uh ov1 not too bad uh, a little bit more of a tankier option i generally like to lean more into the tanky units um versus damage because damage you know makes you become a target so i like to have a variety of um units that uh kind of sneak in and your opponent might not notice them so i kind of like in this one i also really like that the tmm with the jump is nice it can catch people off guard with this big giant mech jumping in on an objective or getting a tmm of two uh which on a mech with this much hp might make them just outright ignore it uh but uh, um, your mileage may vary. You may want to go with the one with a little bit more damage, a little less life. That is up to you. It also may depend on which eras that you are playing in because this one's usable in more. The indirect fire one isn't super amazing, but if this mech's going down about to die, you can always hide and uh, throw down at least one pair of dice on the enemy. That said, let's go ahead and grab the Highlander mech. Check out what we've got here. And uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a big old boy right here. All right. See a little bit of mold line on the leg, a little bit more obvious than some of the other ones. Not the most egregious. A um, little one on the side of the head. The ones on the head are kind of annoying. Should be able to get in here to put antennas onto the helmet or the, the, the head of the cockpit pretty easily enough. Again, some more mold lines. Um, yeah, I like the stance. This is cool. This this little gun here, I don't know if it's a PPC or whatever, um, big giant cannon looking thing. Um, I know there's somebody in the comments right now that's a. a um, Classic bad tech players like click, 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 click. It's this variant, noob. Um, and that's cool. Uh, I don't know the look of the weapons uh, well enough, even though I can identify a good chunk of the mechs. Uh, so if you know what that is, let me know. Um, I'm sure that the unit card here probably indicates what that weapon would be um, if you know what that variant is in classic, but I don't. So, um, but it this is <laughs> this is identifying um, um, a feature that makes this Highlander stand out from the other ones uh i think it's pretty cool but much like my interest in a lot of these newer models it's got a dynamic pose it's moving uh you're like Doo -doo -doo -doo. you know and i like that i think that is very cool all right so moving right along mech number four from the snords irregulars we're going to check out the guillotine so for the pilot car we've got a three four uh mateo orloff first orloff grenadiers Shoo We've got a 2-3, David Rausch, Snords Irregulars. Let's go ahead and get into that unit card here. We've got the 
Uh, guillotine GLT 7N coming in at 37 points, only usable in the Dark Age in the Oak Clan for this variant. 1 TMM, 8 Jump, 442. It's got 12 life, case 2. Not bad. Um, the Jump with TMM 1 and the point total is not bad. It's got a decent amount of HP. 4 damage at medium and short range, and the medium being the one you're probably going to use the most often. Not bad. Uh, let's check out the other side, though, and see what we've got. Coming in at 2 points less, we've got the Guillotine uh, GLT3N, usable in all eras. Uh, 1 TMM, 8 jump, so same. 440, coming in with 12 life and standard case. No overheat on either one of these. Um, I like this one for less points. It's usable in more eras. Saves you 2 points. You do drop from case 2 to case, regular, whatever. Um, it's going to be more versatile because of the errors you can use it in. Still got that 4 damage at medium range, just like this one. You're losing the long range. Oh, no. Um, the number of turns that you're probably likely to use that long range are probably limited. Um, so get up in there, get in the medium range. You know, Save the 2 points if you need it. Uh, if you absolutely really want to you know, get that long range damage and you're playing these errors, you could do that. But me, I like to shave points where I can to make things useful. And for me personally, because the Alpha Strike games that I typically play are played on a 4x4 most of the time, and the games at Southern Assault are played on a 4x4, um, the majority of the combat for me is at medium range, and then short range is the secondary. Long range, you have to specifically try to do that, and then if your opponent pushes to the middle of the table, you lose that advantage. Um, so that long range is going to come up more in much larger games on bigger tables. For, um, I think, most tournament standard Alpha Strike, I think, is played on something close to a 4x4. So won't use the long range too often. That said, let's go ahead and check out the model here. And this one's going to be a little bit different because this one actually came with the jump jets. So we'll give a little perusal here. Uh, not my favorite visually. Uh, my favorite model in this, I like the Highlander. My favorite model is probably going to be this Frankenmech uh, Rifleman, which I left for last for a re reason. So, I like it. This one's pretty reasonably crisp. Um, kind of got a little bit of a dy dynamic pose going on. Uh, and some old lines that obviously need to get cleaned is what it is. Um, but yeah, um, that's, that's uh, I don't got much to say about him other than here he is. Show you guys. Give you a good look, hopefully. But we will pop on the jump jet plumes because i think that is very cool i think almost every one of the models i've got that has jump jets i'm probably going to use them with the exception of the thing was the hatchet man and i was getting ready to say maybe this guy but the pose with this his feet do curve and i think that's kind of funny oh god it's adorable it's like he's about to land or he's like a dfa can you imagine this guy like dfa like maybe maybe he's just like geronimo and he just goes you know, He's, he's crushing an urban mech um that's funny i like that that's very cool so i think with the jump jets so far with the plumes um i think that the hatchet man i think it was uh i think he got the short end of the stick his his plumes aren't very good but this one looks great and i like it i like it so we'll go ahead and set him down. And last but not least, the one you guys are probably the most interested in is the Hybrid Rifleman, the Franken-Mech. So this one is going to be a 3-4 for the pilot, Elizabeth Lizzie Sneed. Snords of Regulars. Shwoop. And for the other one, a 1-1. One, one. Wow, Snords of Regulars, Samuel Shorty Sneed. Interesting. Wow. I mean, granted, this is tailored more for classic, but a 1-1, one, one, that's like, you're like, you're the somebody of somebody's if your skills are like that. You start getting to 1s or 0-1s or something, like, you know you're somebody important. And Battletech, if you are a, a Battletech fan and you know a lot more about this than I do, who are these people? I could look it up. I will say this. We're going to come back to this card in a moment. I've noticed something, and uh, we'll come back to it. So, getting into the unit cards here, we've got the Rifleman Sneed 2. Coming in at 44 points, TMM 1, 8 move, usable in the Dark Age and Ill Clan Eris, 554 for damage, 1 overheat, 11 life, case 2, ECM, indirect fire, and rear 1-1. One, one. Pretty cool. I dig the TMM. Um, it's a little pricey, but 5 damage at medium is not bad. 11 life is nothing to scoff at. That's pretty cool. Not too bad. Not too bad. There's probably some better variants of things out there, but um, yeah, I, I dig it. 1 TMM and 8 move. Not bad. Um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's flip this over, check out the other variant. Whoa, that's a big joint, uh, point change, 12-point uh, difference. Um, so the RFL3N Sneed coming at 32 points, TMM1, 8-move usable in the Succession Wars all the way up to the Ill Clan. 233 for damage, 10 life, indirect fire, 1 rear, 1-1. One, one. Uh, so this one's an overheat one. Uh, it's got one less life, um, and 554 versus 233, so you're losing 3 points here, 2 points here, 1 point here. So, But 12-point difference... Um, 
I generally like to run on the lean side of things, um, and I like this because um, it's 12 points cheaper, usable in more air, so it's a little, a little bit more flexible. You are dealing less damage, but it's one of those like, do they waste the shots on this or something more important? And again, for me, I like to generally try and save points to field more material. That means it's more stuff my opponent has to deal with, more options for me to play the objective game. Um, so I like this. You probably could do pretty good with this with the five damage, but I think if you're looking for damage, there's probably some other variants that might be good of other mechs you might have. Um, but three damage for that, one TMM, eight move, overheat one. Yeah, not too bad. So one of the things I did want to mention, um, we'll come back to this card because it's easier to see after we check out this little bro. So we're going to go through the model, then we're going to grab this bag here because I've noticed what that's for. And no, it's not plastic crack from Catalyst. Um, I don't endorse drugs, kids, uh, or or fans. Um, so you'll notice the <laughs> the half, this side of it is kind of like an archer. Um, this, the center here kind of looks like a rifleman. Um, the legs, I think, look like a rifleman. And then it's got what looks like a warhammer on this side or some combination. Obviously, it's a Franken mech. This is probably my favorite from the box, followed by maybe the guillotine just because of the jump. And maybe this one's tied with the Highlander. Um, but yeah, so, um, a few mode lines here and there, not too bad. Um, this looks a little bit more crisp than some of the archers I had. It's not, some of the archers I have are a little curved on the uh, housing. These look reasonably like defined so you can get in there with that um yeah very cool i like this this is pretty neat oh yep and you can get in here and do the kind of glow effect on your ppc or large laser whatever he's got yeah this is cool um so what i'll say with this one is um there are a couple of bits in here and this is the first time we've got a a multi-part kit i don't say multi-part kit a couple of extra bits really um we did get the urban mech for the jumping but this one's a little different because those are basing um I'm not sure what we're supposed to use these for. I mean, there's cinematic effects. I just don't know, like, what what mech they go on, unless it's, like, put it on the rear or something. I don't, I don't know. Maybe they, they wanted you to put this on, like, a barrel. Um, but it doesn't kind of fit very well. Um, it's kind of square. I wonder if there's a model here that has, like, a square, square spot in their back. There's not on that. Is there one on this guy? I don't see one. Um... I don't know why they'd be there. That'd be goofy. Um, is there like... Oh, does it go on his feet? No, that'd be dumb. Yeah, I don't know. I can't figure out where these go. So if someone else got a Snord's or regular box, where do these where do these go? These little, these little gizmos here. Uh, let me grab the box. Yeah, they don't even show in the pictures on it. So, yeah. Oh, yoot, yeet. I don't know. So one of the things that I noticed in the pictures here is for the RFL 3N Sneed 32, you've got like a Phoenix Hawk like head mounted on top of the mech and you get a Phoenix Hawk bit. I thought this was for basing. This is to put on the top. So you get full on Franken mech and you get uh, the ability to kind of make it the way you want. You get to choose the bit for the variant, which is interesting because typically you get what you get. They gave us an option to pick, right? You get to pick that bit or the other one. I'm probably going to put the rifleman... Um, little con tower thing on here because i think that's going to look better for me visually i'm not as attached to putting an extra helmet or head or cockpit on top of the other guy so i'll probably put that on there and just you know lean into the rifleman and call it good but that's very interesting that they included those and you get a little bit of a choice with your plastic mini here which is not something we typically get um I think that's cool. I wouldn't want that to be an every model thing because that's a lot of stuff to keep track of, especially if I'm not painting this immediately or gluing immediately. But yeah, that's pretty neat because we had this one with the uh, Phoenix Hawk and this one with the Rifleman um, kind of tower there. So it's a nice little difference, nice little... Um oddity that i noticed and i think that is cool with that being said folks we'll do a quick recap of the minis here but i think that's about it for the review so we'll go back through here we've got the spartan which we checked out first in all of his goofy glory we've got the highlander with his giant cannon that i don't know what it is and someone in the comments probably clicking away and informing me we've got the guillotine with his cool jumping stuff um sorry for the sound effects sometimes i get going and i'm having fun uh so yeah we got that little bro and then as we had just showcased we've got the franken rifleman um and honestly it's probably my favorite followed by the guillotine maybe slightly tied with the highlander but probably number two um i would love to see more mechs like this i think the franken mech concept is very cool but seeing more variety of, of kit bashed things like this 
I think it would be cool and add up some variety to the table visually, even if I'm just using it as a rifleman, proxying it as other variants. It's just cool because it breaks up, up everything, especially if you're playing Mercs. That being said, folks, hope you enjoyed this. As always, please smash Alpha Strike that like and subscribe button. Hopefully you return to hang out in some future videos. But that said, you guys know if I don't sign off, I will continue to ramble. So as always, if you want to support the channel, check the description. Check out Fortress Miniatures and Games, Death Ray Designs, and Monument Hobbies. And as always, keep rolling your dice, keep painting your beautiful models, and I will catch you guys in the next video.